And I believe collectively as a group, we're going to kick the competition butt because we understand how important it is to think, execute, and dominate. Suck it up! Get tough! Suck it up! Get tough! People want to have success. People want to make a lot of money, but they want it to be easy without any challenges. You think it was easy for me to become one of the top 450 basketball players in the world that you never heard of. The only way I made it to the NBA is I was fundamentally sound, I was mentally tough, and I never quit. And even when I wanted to quit, I had people in my life that would make sure I didn't quit. I hired and, and sent out the top 10 motivational speakers, watch all their videos, and I watched them one by one because I understand that if I pay attention to what the best are doing, I could be the best too. I watched game film on Michael Jordan. No matter how much I watched, I couldn't do what Michael Jordan could do. I would watch Magic Johnson. I couldn't do what Magic Johnson would do. But I sat there and had these videos. I watched Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins. My hot wife was scared. I was scared. I called him to my office and I said what a husband say. I said, babe, we're gonna be okay. Every month the checking account was dreaming. I said, babe, we're gonna be okay. Let's start a motivational speaking list. I go to Jerry Sloan and I say, Jerry, I'm trying to make your team, but since we don't scrimmage, I feel like I can't show you what I can do. Go to Corral, hear me clearly, listen to his answer, and it will unlock some mysteries as to how you become the best in the world at what you do over a long period of time. Jerry, I'm trying to make your team, but I feel like I can't show you what I can do. He says, Walter, I already know what you can do. But if you want to make my team, I suggest you listen, follow directions, and execute. Listen, follow directions, and execute. What I didn't realize, even though we did scrimmage in practice, throughout practice, we did drills, and he created what I call habits and rituals. Every single day, practice was the same. Every single day, we drilled on fundamentals. Every single day, we worked on the habits and rituals. So even though my mind was floating, even though I was selfish and self-centered, he was conditioning me into the culture through practice of habits and ritual. The reason why I tripled my NBA income in three years is because of habits and rituals. Next year, if your name didn't get called to come across the stage, I'm here to tell you they will call your name next year if you go back home and execute habits and rituals. I wanted to scrimmage for me, but Jerry Sloan was getting me ready to play for the Utah Jazz. So every day it was about habits and rituals. Having hot food is about habits and rituals. Great customer service is about habits and rituals. Being the best in the world at what you do, being a pro, is all about habits and rituals. Let me tell you something. I learned a very valuable lesson when I played for the Utah Jazz. I had a point guard on my team who's arguably the best point guard in the history of the NBA. His name is John Stockton. John Stockton would go to a chiropractor four times a day on game day. You know what I said to myself? I'm not doing that. It doesn't take all that. John Stockton played 19 years in the NBA. I played three. You would have thought I'd have been smart enough to watch a Hall of Famer and just shut my mouth, hop in the car, and go with them. No! My mind said, yeah, it doesn't take all that. And I would tease him. Man, John Stock, are you uh, OCD or something? Why are you going to a chiropractor four times a day? He swore by his chiropractor. That man played point guard in the NBA until he was 40 years old. And he didn't retire because he got slow. He retired because he refused to wear baggy shorts. He loved his Daisy Dukes. Every day on game day, that man would go to a chiropractor four times a day. And in my immature basketball mind, I would say, eh, it doesn't take all that. I don't need to do all that. I'm an award-winning motivational speaker because now I pay attention to details. Another peak performance truth, peak performance are detail-oriented.
My college career was over. I got offered a job to become a hospital administrator. Two year program, $75,000 job. And right before I took the job, my daddy called me on the phone. Let me tell you about my daddy. When I was a little boy, my daddy would always pick me up. When he came home from work, he'd pick me up. When he saw me in the nursery after church, he'd pick me up. No matter how long he worked, no matter how tired he was, my daddy would always pick me up. So when I had my kids, I would always pick up my kids. When I got home, sometimes I was tired. they have a bottle in one hand, and they just lifted up the other hand, and they knew what daddy was supposed to do. My job was to pick them up. This is a spiritual interaction. When you pick up a child, it is a spiritual transaction. When you pick up a child, you change their perspectives. When you pick up a child, all of a sudden they can see the world the way you see it. I don't care what your children have done, there's nothing they can do for you to stop picking them up. What my daughter's a drug addict, I don't care, pick her up. My son messes up. I don't care. Pick him up. I don't care. You pick them up. That is your job, mama. That is your job, daddy. That is your job, grandma. That is your job, granddad. Your number one job is to pick them up and change their perspective. My saddest day, one day, my daddy looked at me and said, boy, you too big, I can't pick you up anymore. But when he couldn't pick me up physically, he would pick me up emotionally. He would pick me up spiritually. I had a great dad because he would always pick me up. He would always change my perspective. So my daddy called me on the phone, he asked me a question. He said, son, you had a tough year, what's next? I said, dad, I'm gonna be a hospital administrator. He said, not bad, but let me ask you a question, son. Do you believe you're an NBA player? You cannot produce yourself in image, son. If you don't think so, go take the job. But if you believe you're an NBA player, My dad had self-control and discipline and waited for my answer. And my answer was, yes. You're right, Dad. I can't work the rest of my life. But coming in the NBA is a dream. I've had ever since I was a little boy. He said, go for it, son. I limped back into my coach's office with a cast to my foot. Tears in my eyes. I said, Coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He said, do two things you can play in the NBA. Lose 20 pounds and shoot a three-point shot with range, you can play in the NBA. If you lose 20 pounds and shoot a three-point shot with range, you can play in the NBA. I lost 20 pounds, and every day I would shoot 500 shots a day, every single day. I got invited to training camp with the Dallas Mavericks, and not only did I make the team, I became the first ever undrafted rookie free agent in the history of the Dallas Mavericks to start open at night. Could you imagine what was going through my mind? I have not started a basketball game since high school. I got to the arena, they dimmed the lights, and they put the spotlight right on me. Right through the spotlight, I saw my mom, my dad, and all my brothers and sisters. Then I saw my dad. He just pumped my fist. He pumped his fist. Stream down my face. Thank you for all those timeouts. Thank you for making sure I was always home when the street lights came on. Thank you for making sure I could always hear your voice. Thank you for always changing my perspective.